Bob's Fix-It Shop uh, Guitar Effects Pedal Edition. And uh, I've got my son David here. He's a musician. And uh, he brought me this. What is it? It's a Digitech Whammy 4. Yeah, and um, he's having problems with it. Uh, can you explain those? Yeah, so the way that this pedal kind of works is that it's got a foot switch, or switch, a foot switch that... Um, pedal. Yeah, yeah, it's like the expression thing. Um, it's fine. Um, <laughs> but it goes up and down, and you, it'll change the octave. It'll like bring your, like, if you're playing this note, if you bring the pedal up, it'll go up the octave to the next note. So the example you were using, what, uh, it's like if you have 440, it'll slide up to 880. Right. Or A440, it'll slide up to 880. So, and those signals are mixed? Uh, it depends on what setting you have. Okay. Um, the way that we are figuring out the problem comes from the switched, be or the mixed one, because it's so much easier to hear. So okay. like if you have... You can hear both the the normal octave and then the higher octave as well. But then when you bring it down and you have the pedal all the way like this, it should hypothetically do nothing. And what it does is that instead of mixing 440 with 440, it'll have 440 with like 432. Yeah, you can hear that overtone. Yeah. And where those are mixing and off. Yeah, and you have to really be. That's what it's supposed to sound like, but I'm being so careful to add just like the perfect amount of pressure to get it there. Where it naturally just wants to be right here. And like the, if you did something like a... All of that stuff would just sound awful. Because everything is just a little bit off from itself. Yeah. Um, and there's a way to... So it's, so it's out of tune. Yes. Yeah. Um, and there's a way to calibrate it. Uh, we've tried calibrating it, and it's just not, it's still not, it's still not. And yeah, what happens when you calibrate it? It basically just resets where the, like, the the first value and the highest value are. Um, but it feels like even at the lowest, it's not picking up the, it's not picking up the lowest is the lowest. So okay. you couldn't, you can't feasibly use it in a, a musical setting because it's always going to be a little bit out of tune. Yeah. Which is not how it usually is. Yeah. And where did you get this? I got it off a stranger on the internet. And what kind of a stranger? A Facebook one. Yeah. <laughs> I think you earlier referred to him as a weirdo. Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay. Well, uh, anything else you want to show me about it? Uh, not really. I think that the, the way that I've been deducing the problem is by having these... Single note, but the octave is giving it this weird uh, out of tune thing. Yeah. Yeah. And so, what does the other row do there? So the other row is just it just takes one signal and it messes with it. So like, this is the one that you probably hear in like Rage Against the Machine stuff or like like what? Like Rage Against the Machine stuff where you hear that. <laughs> So it's just taking the signal, it's not mixing it back. Yeah. Alright, well I think I know I have everything I need to uh, take a look at this and see if I can figure it out. So, Alright, so if you think you'll find that interesting, hang on and it should be an interesting, uh, interesting ride. So, alright. Alright, so let's start looking at this. Well, my son's gone now, but um, so right now I have the signal generator at 440 hertz, about 300 millivolts peak to peak. Then if we look at our scope, then um, if we go all the way down, it should be the um, one octave up. And what? Oh, I see. That's two octaves. Okay, let me go to octave. So I want to go one. Let's go to one octave up. Okay, so when we're down like that, 
we're one octave up. That's, oh, when I had my hand on it, it was perfect, right? Then we go down to here. And that should be 440, and that's way off, right? That's 600 hertz. That's right. That's wrong. Okay, so let's try two octaves up. So that should be 880, and that should be, so that should be 1760. So that's about perfect there, right? And um, so the down is working and the up is not. Okay, so let's go over to this other thing where we have harmony and that's where we're mixing the signal back in again. Right, and so that all the way up, uh, so that's, yeah, I don't think we can look at this here. Let's go over to the signal analyzer. All right, so let's have the pedal, if the pedal is all the way down, then we should have um, the, an octave, the fundamental and the octave above. So we should have 440 and 880. So let's look over here and um, I'm gonna turn on averaging and let's see what we've got here. So that's with the pedal all the way down we have 556 hertz and 428 or 440 I don't know right so it's right around our 440 and um, I think that's actually supposed to be so all the way down that's supposed to be an octave below And then here, if I press the pedal down, there's the pedal all the way down. Let's run our average again. So we've got our 440. And then we have about our, we have 876 hertz. So our pedal down seems to be in good calibration, but the pedal up seems really, no, the pedal up seems to be good, but the pedal down seems all screwed up. Because if I'm understanding this right, this peak should move way over to the other side of this when that goes down. Um, and, uh, and it's not. So let's go live again. And let's set our frequency to uh, our stop to be 1K. So there's our 880. Where's my cursor? Oh, it's way over there. Okay. Uh, there we go. Okay, so we've got 440, which is our fundamental. and 880, okay, so that's that's perfect, right? And I had to put on my peak tracking on, on and that helps me get to the top. But then, if I 
push a pedal all the way down they get close I thought it went an octave below but it's not even going below right it's just slightly above the other one that seems messed up to me but like I say I'm going to run the calibration and see if that fixes it. I'm not sure if we were doing it right before, but uh, let's turn on our average here. And we got 440 and 476. So that's why, that's why you're hearing those overtones are close, right? They're just, you know, 14 off or something like that. But um, yeah, so let's, Let's run the uh, calibration and see if that fixes it. All right, here's the calibration procedure. And it uh, doesn't look too bad. Uh, this is actually from the, uh, this is a four, and this is actually from the five manual. I had a hard time finding a four manual, but I did find one and the procedure is the same. So let's give it a try. Okay, so we disconnect the power. We hold the button down, power it on. Then we see the light flashing. Then we release it. We go up, down, up, down. And that should be it. And then we do this to take us out of it. All right, so let's Let's uh, look at our um, signal analyzer again and see if that fixed it. Yeah, it's the same thing. The two frequencies are right next to each other. Let's uh, zoom in closer. Okay, so there's our fundamental. And you can see that we're at 466. This should be 220. That's what's so screwed up about that. Um, let's take the averaging off. If I press it down it does drop over there. What's it at there? But that's really cranking on it to get it down all the way. Hmm. Hey, well, look at this. <laughs> We've got, hold on. Um, so let me set my Stop frequency to 1 kilohertz and average off. All of a sudden, come on. Yeah, for some reason I'm not, let me uh, average it again. There it's at 220. Now it's working fine, right? So the difference is I was messing around with it and when I calibrated it, I did it about 10 times and then it worked where before I was following the directions. I don't know though. I'm huh. Okay. Let me try that again. So what I did is I disconnected it, hold the button down, plug it back in 
Okay, and then I let the button up. Up, down, up, down, up, down. And in the book it says twice, but I did it a bunch of times. When I'm done, push the button. Yeah, let's see how it looks now. Yeah, 220, and then let's see if we go all the other way of what our other side looks like. Oops, here, I'll go back. I'll do it slow, right? Eight eighty. So that's looking perfect. Um, so yeah, interesting. So we just weren't calibrating it. We were calibrating it according to the directions and we actually had to do it more than that. Or maybe before it just wasn't working and now it started working, I don't know. So let's just take a look at the circuit here. And um, I'm not an electrical engineer, but uh, looks like just a lot of filtering stuff here kind of coming in. And then we come into an op amp here that looks like it's, again, it's uh, acting as a bit of a filter. And then, and then it kind of picks up right here and then goes to your, your dry out. And so the, the dry out is amplified, I think, kind of coming through here. And again, uh, more, a couple of inductors to do a little more filtering. But there's your dry out, right? And then um, uh, where we left off, we come through here, we come into another op amp, and then we come down into the CS422 chip, and that is a, uh audio codec with volume control. And um, so if we look, that signal is coming into the analog in left plus and minus, and it's kind of, um, yeah, it's doing a plus or minus here a little bit, messing around with that. So I think what's happening is this chip is taking this data and it's serializing it and then um, uh, sending it out. Let's see, I don't know what pins it's sending it out on. Um, but the interesting thing, and then this chip is doing a couple of things. Number one, it's taking this left channel, it's digitizing it, and then through these pins down here, it's sending it to um, the DSP. There's a DSP chip we'll look at in a second. And, um, and then that DSP is sending it back through these pins, clocking it back in here, and then that goes to analog out left right? And then so the analog out left comes through here through the lop amp and then is kind of put out through some buffers and into, no, actually some, uh, some filters and then goes out the wet added channel, right? So that, so if we look back here, we have uh, our Guitar coming in here, it goes down to the prod, to the DSP. DSP uh, does all its magic to it, and then clocks it back out here, and then it comes out analog out plus and minus. Now notice that the analog out right and left completely unused, but there is something coming into the analog uh, in right and left. And it's actually, it looks like the pedal is um, using a light emitting diode and a, a pickup here. And that 
is being amplified to this op amp and that's coming into the right channel so the so it's almost like it's it's they like oh we bought this chip we can use it to do the a to d conversion on the position of the pedal and it looks like the pedal is just using light it's not using an encoder or a potentiometer it's just using light to um come back into here get digitized and um and then that then is clocked out to the processor so it's using this right channel because this is a, a stereo chip so it's using the right channel to pump out the signal the position of the um of the pedal into the dsp which is very interesting i think uh it's very clever right so then if we go down here we've got a just a little processor chip it's doing all the uh, activation of the lights taking the input and um, it's probably just a, a very simply programmed uh, device to kind of manage the uh, button positions the LEDs on and off and also kind of manage that calibration and um, also it also is managing the serial in from the MIDI, from the MIDI port, right? And so this is probably managing the, um, uh, you know, reading in that serial MIDI stuff and converting it and then uh, sending it back over to that, uh, this chip as necessary, but also down here, which is our DSP, right? So our DSP here, I think these are the, these are the data lines. These are the data lines coming in right here. And these are the data lines coming out right here. So this is coming from that, that codec chip. And this is going out to the codec chip. And uh, yeah, so there's probably some code in this chip to do all that, all the harmonics that's probably being done inside of here right and um, uh, it's reading this serial data coming in uh, doing whatever it wants to to it and then generating uh, sound coming out so I, I don't know that's a quick look at it and uh, it's pretty straightforward there's not not too much there and uh, so let's open it up and take a look inside What's up, cat? All right, well, let's open it up and just take a look. I don't know. Uh, hopefully, I won't wreck it taking it apart, but it's always a chance you take. To see how that, that uh, light sensor works in there. Plastic washers there.
Well, that was really hard to get out. Um, yeah, and I think it was just that these things were kind of sticking, sticking out, and uh, so you had to kind of bend this out a little bit, but that just seems kind of weird to me. Anyways, let's take these screws out and we can just take a look. And uh, all right. So, we got our light bulbs, and uh, we've got our, they're kind of bent over, I don't know why. But here you can see, I don't know if you can see it, but you can see that this is, um, light and then it gets darker and darker and darker and then really what it's doing is it's just coming between this LED and this sensor right here and then our these look like little op amps this is probably our um, converter and here's our processor and here's our DSP I think, I don't know. I'm not looking at it too carefully or whatever, but um, yeah, it looks pretty nice. And here's a power supply, uh, plus and minus five volts. And uh, so I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna check these, make sure that there's no pins that are messed up and, uh, and then just put it together. I just wanted to kind of look inside. Now, let me just make sure that all these solder joints are good and then I'm going to put it all back together. All right, well, that's it for Rob's Fix-It Shop with our Digitech Whammy board. And I got my son, the musician here. He's going to just kind of go through it a little bit, just give us a little demo. So the problem that we had, right, was that it was out of tune when you would... Uh... But I think there was also a basic misunderstanding that you had about how, how it works, right? Okay. <laughs> because you were thinking that all the way down was the fundamental. Well, you can set it to different things. No, right. Yeah, but if you have it, if you have it over here, then all the way down is one octave below, and all the way up is one octave below. Oh, interesting. So then... got that weird spot in the middle where it's actually what you want it to be, your main note, your fundamental. Interesting. Yeah. Well then what's the... And that's what it says right here. So yeah, you... so it says it right here. Uh, that makes it weird because you'd think that if you were having a harmony, that you'd have that... Supplies you with both, so you have guitar, octave up, octave below. Correct. Yep. Yep. And this it's is mixed. Adding, this is yeah. This is adding an octave above. This yep. is adding an octave above. Yep. 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 So that's why when you have this, no matter what you do, you're hearing some form of harmony. Unless you're in the middle, then you'll hear the whoa, 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 whoa. It's almost really high. Yeah. Because then your frequencies are just slightly off.
Trying on a fifth. That's <laughs> This should sound just like if you're like having any Green Day thing. Like... So what's this? What's, it, what's going on over here? Then? So this is just, uh, and then the the whammy part of it just is, is uh, that's the one where it's all the way down, nothing's affecting it, versus all the way up. Oh, it's not on. It's two octaves, so like in like Rage Against the Machine stuff, you'll hear that like. Pretty. I know. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, uh, thanks, David, for playing us out on there. And uh, if you enjoyed the video, please hit like and subscribe. And thanks for watching.